And next, look at current loops. Not surprisingly, current loops works with phasers just like it did at DC, except again, we are now using complex numbers. Again, as a reminder, when you're dealing with phasers, the voltage goes to A minus JB, the real part is cosine, minus J is sine, resistors, the impedance becomes R, inductors become J omega L, capacitors become 1 over J omega C. For example, suppose we want to find the currents in the following circuit. The first step, just like we did DC, is to find the current loops. We have one additional step, I have to convert these to phasor impedances. The impedance of the cosine is 3 plus J0, 3 cosine. The capacitor becomes 1 over J omega C. Inductor becomes J omega L, and resistors stay the same. I then also define the current loops. Here arbitrarily I chose I1, I2, I3, all going clockwise. I can now write the loop equations. Around loop I1, I get minus 3 plus 3000 I1 minus J500 I1 minus I2 equals 0. Around loop I2, minus J500 I2 minus I1 plus J4 times I2 plus 6000 I2 equals 0. And room, round loop I3, I'll have minus J1000 I3 plus J4 I3 minus I2 plus 3000 I3 minus I1 plus 5000 I3 equals 0. Gives you three equations, three unknowns. Now solve. To solve exactly like we did back at DC, group the terms, place a matrix form, and solve. Except that now some of the terms are complex. Again, MATLAB doesn't really care. When you solve in MATLAB, it's just the inverse of A times B, I get complex numbers. What these numbers mean, again, is real part is cosine minus J is sine. The frequency is the frequency of the input. The input was 1,000 radians per second. Everything in the circuit is 1,000 radians per second. So the output is the amplitude. Here this is in milliamps. 1.4 milliamps cosine 0.4 milliamps sine minus 0.4 milliamps sine. For I2 is 0.04 milliamps cosine plus 0.1 milliamps sine. For I3 plus 0.49 milliamps cosine minus 0.2 sine. If you have dependent sources, again, nothing really changes, except now I'm using complex numbers. With dependent sources, again, define your current loops, convert everything to phasor form, and now solve. In phasor form, this becomes 0 minus J100. The frequency is 50. This becomes J omega L, when omega is 50. Uh, and capacitor becomes 1 over J omega C. Converting to phasor form, here's your circuit. Finding the loops to be I1, I2, and I3, I can now start writing the loop equations. When I write the loop equations, I have, start with the dependent source, Ix is I1, Vy is the impedance, minus J20 times I2. This current says that I2 minus I1 is 10Ix, and I need two more equations. Uh, I can't write the loop equation around I1 because I don't know this guy. can't write, write I2. I can write the loop equation around I3. This just says minus 10 Vy plus 10 I3 minus J20 I3 equals 0. The last equation, let's do a super loop. Just take this big outer loop. And that would just be minus J100 plus 5 plus J10 times I1 plus J20 times I2 plus 10 minus J20 I3 equals zero. There I've got five equations, five unknowns. To solve, group the terms, place a matrix form, throw in MATLAB, and solve. What I get are complex numbers, and what the numbers mean is the real part is cosine minus J is sine, and the frequency doesn't change. The input is at 50 ratings per second, everything else is at 50 ratings per second. So Current loops don't work with complex numbers. Voltage nodes works with complex numbers. Um, everything we did before still works, just now we're using complex numbers.
In our next video, we'll then look at Thevenin's, and not surprisingly, Thevenin's also works with complex numbers.